Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapse version of a little puppy in soft pastel. I hope you enjoy this here. If you do, then please do subscribe to me here on YouTube. And also, if you'd like to paint along with me on the full tutorial, check me out over on my Patreon channel. I'll add all the links in the description. I decided to indulge in a little puppy portrait this month, especially for my patrons as a nice, fun little demo to work on. And I just happened to have a really nice model to work on. This is little Duncan, and he is a Yorkshire Terrier mixed with a Dachshund, which is just a lovely mix. So my mum sent me some lovely photos of him and I couldn't resist. So you saw the background going in there really quick. That was just 10 minutes of work to create a very subtle background. And that's something I'll talk about in the tutorial. Why I don't just use a light colored paper. Um, well, there are a few reasons, but one of them, which you're going to see is when you're adding a dark colored animal on a very light colored background, it's easy to make a bit of a mess. And some of that loose pastel pigment, especially the black, does get over the background a little. So if I've painted the background in subtle colours like I have here, I can always clean up the background as I go using those same colours. So I love painting black and tan animals. I really love painting black fur because you get lovely, rich, dark purples or greys or blues, even browns, or all of those colours mixed in through the black. So it's never just black. And then I love adding the little highlights of tan. I especially love some tan spots on the eyebrows. It adds so much expression to the face. And little Duncan is certainly full of character. It's not often that you get to paint a puppy, and that's why I jumped at the chance to paint him. I think often most people prefer to have a portrait of their animal from a time when they knew them, like this the longest. You have such a short amount of time when they're looking like this. And even little Duncan looks very different to this now, so they change so quickly at this stage. So lots of lovely purple tones used. It's interesting lighting because it's quite subtle, but you can really see the effect of the light coming slightly from the right, in the eyes especially. So you've got a very subtly lit eye on this side. And sometimes when you work on this eye with less detail in it, when you do that one first, sometimes it just doesn't look right until you get the other eye in with more detail and a brighter little spot of highlight. But it's important to not add a brighter highlight in that other eye. Otherwise, you'll lose that lighting effect. So you've really got to trust what you're seeing in the reference and trust that as you progress, hopefully the realism will start to happen in the painting. So in the earlier stages or certain parts of the painting may not look very realistic on their own, but when you add the rest of the painting, so that eye on the left, I really didn't like the look of it as I was working on it. But it makes sense now that I have the other more detailed eye in and a little more of the face. So my favourite part of little Duncan is all of those soft edges, such fuzzy, hairy, scruffy little edges. And I'm using a lot of pastel pencil to create the very finest hairs. But it's mostly the bigger sticks that I'm using for the main parts of the face. So I'm using pencils 
in a similar color to the color of pastel that's in that area. So where I've got black edges, I've used a black pencil, uh, sometimes a brown pencil, to flick those fine little hairs out over the light colored background. And I'm also using my fingertips quite a lot to blend the pastel into the paper better, to soften my marks in between each layer. So I'm building up lots of layers of color, trying to get that believable depth to the fur. So I'm using pastel matte paper for this and I chose the Sienna color which I seem to be using quite a lot recently. It's definitely a phase I'm in, but it's a very nice color of paper, which you can see at the beginning of this. And, and also you can still see the color of the paper where I've taped it onto my easel. So a lovely warm base to work on. And in the photo reference, it's quite a plain background. He was sitting on a set of white colored shelves. And for once I decided to create a very plain and simple background. So I didn't even include the line of the shelf just behind his tail. I left it very simple, just bringing in a little bit of the shadow to the side of him and that main patch of shadow that you can see behind his paw on the right. So I'm working on down the body now. I'm filling in most of the black areas with a black new pastel stick. I like to use a harder pastel when I'm using black. So I'm getting the collar all blocked in again, mostly using the pastel sticks, but bringing in a little bit of pencil just to get the edges the way I want them. And you can see that I haven't really worked on the chin or the muzzle to the right of the face. And I'm waiting until I get the collar blocked in, all of the dark area in behind the collar then I can add all of those fine little hairs out over the top of that. So everything in the portrait gets layered up in a particular way. You're really working from background to foreground and layering things up as they do actually sit on top of each other. And you can see from my marks coming off the soft pastel sticks just how strong the pigment is. So when I'm adding light colors over the top of dark, it's not a problem for that color to really show up on top of no matter how dark the layers are underneath. And that's partly from the paper that I'm using. Pastel mat is a good example of a paper specifically made for soft pastel and therefore it's able to accept many layers of pastel you can work light on top of dark. But if you're just starting out in soft pastel and you'd like to learn more, I have tons of videos here on my YouTube channel. One video talking about 15 different pastel papers showing you all the pros and cons. So if you're just getting started and the world of soft pastel seems a little daunting with how many different brands there are, and so many different types of materials, then do check out some of my other videos and hopefully they will give you some information and get you started. And then if you'd like to paint along with me, I do have lots of free tutorials here on my YouTube channel. I'm hoping to make a new paint along demo for YouTube very soon. I've just been kept really busy with other projects at the minute. But if you'd like even more tutorials, then do check out my tutorials library on my website, emmacolbertart.com. 
And these are all linked to my Patreon channel, where for a small subscription each month, you can access my entire library. It's got dozens of dog portraits especially, but lots of other subject matter there too. So finishing off the bottoms of the paws, and I also worked a little more on the shadow on the ground. But as I said, a lot of time also spent cleaning up little areas of the background where some of the pigment has blown over the background or simply fallen because I'm working upright on an easel. So it's very useful to be able to clean up the background as I go. Final whiskers. And I hope that you've enjoyed seeing little Duncan come to life. So please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this here. But thanks very much for watching. And until next time, happy pastling.